guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to a combination of my May wrap up and my June TBR. So I'm probably not going to go too in depth on this May wrap up just because I just did a mid monthly reading check in with you guys where I did go pretty in depth about um, a lot of the books that I had read at that point in May, which was maybe just like three shy of the full amount. So I am probably not going to go all the way into like synopses and all of that stuff. I will try and put a card up above so you guys can go and check out that video if you're really, really interested. But yeah, let's just jump right into the stats first. So while I thought May was a bit of a slumpy month for me, um, I think honestly it was only a slump in terms of fantasy. I burned myself out, guys. I don't know what was going on. I, but I mean, I was also not particularly motivated to read things. And when I get that way, uh, the only genre that I want to read for the most part tends to be romance because it's so easy, it's light, it's keeping my mind busy, but I don't have to put any extra thought or effort into it. So I ended up reading 13 books in May for a total of 4,848 pages. Now out of those 13 books, seven of them were borrowed, mostly from KU. Honestly, I'm pretty sure maybe only one or two of them might have been from the library, if that. Four of them were ARCs and one of them was a reread for me. I did a lot better with my series this month, so only three of them were new series, seven of them were continuing series, and three of them were standalones. In terms of formats that I read them in, 12 were via ebook and ebook only. One of them I did end up reading physically and that's that's it. I was pretty uh, heavy on the convenience factor last month because of the whole slumping thing, so I stuck to what I could read pretty much on my phone or my Kindle exclusively, um, and a lot of my arcs are on there so that made it a little bit easier as well, but yeah, that's, that's, that's where all of that came from. And again, back to the slumping thing, 12 of those were romance. One of them would be considered like a contemporary mystery, I guess instead of a romance, although I think that it did have a romantic subplot, but for the most part it was just contemporary. I did not pick up a single sci-fi or fantasy through the entire month of May, and I don't have any regrets because it really did kind of reset my mental space. For the most part, all of them were really, really good. I ended up having five five-star reads, five four-star reads, and only three three-star reads. I'll talk about those when I get to them. Three stars still pretty good for me, guys. I It's just, it's something that I wasn't like particularly feeling or I felt that I had to push myself through or there were a lot of issues with it. Like I said, I'll get to that when I talk about them. As far as what types of books they were and what age range they were, I'm just gonna combine these together because they, they all fall under the same category. All 13 of them were full-length novels and all 13 of them were meant for adults. So like I said, let me run through these pretty quick. I talked about um, the majority of these over the last week in my last video. I've put to the side for now Children of Ragnarok by Cinda Williams Chima, just not because it's not good, because it is, but like I said, I put aside all fantasy and everything last month. I was not in the right headspace for it. I'm hoping that that's changing because I did pick up a sci-fi over the last couple of days and I really, really loved it. So hopefully we'll be able to get back into that shortly. But last month was not the month for me to push myself through something that I was not in the right headspace for. I will be picking it up again, hopefully soon. It is the next arc on my list to read. You guys will get an update on that from me at some point, but it's off to the side for now. I'll pick it up later. Aside from that though, the first book that I got to pick up in May was Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I was floored when I got approved for the e-arc of this book and I adored it. I gave it five out of five stars. I talked about it in my last video. I'm gonna stop saying that. Just go check out the last video if you guys want to see all of my thoughts, but it was amazing. Next up after that was Grace Under Fire by Julie Garwood, who is an author that I usually traditionally enjoy immensely. She does romantic suspense and I have liked a lot of the books that she's done in the past. However, in this particular case, it was not for me and I gave it three stars. The next romance was Fake It Till You Bake It by Jamie Wesley. This was an e-arc that I received. I think it was sent to me via email. I loved it. I gave it five stars. It was a sports romance, but it was a baking romance. It was absolutely precious and I adored it. After that was probably one of my favorite reads of the entire month and that was All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata, one of my absolute favorite romance authors, the queen of slow burn. She killed it. Five out of five, All Roads Lead Here, knocked it out of the park. I need a physical copy of this book stat so that I can reread it and just sink into it and adore every single second of it. I want to reread this book again right now. I loved it that much. Now it was followed by Hands Down, also by Mariana Zapata. I didn't dislike this book by any means, but after reading All Roads, Hands Down came out first, but I read All Roads first. Uh, it just felt like a step back. I didn't really like the character progression quite as much, even though I loved Zack in The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. 
Um, he was one of my favorite characters in that story, but he, I don't know, something about his story just didn't click very well with me. I felt like we needed a lot more characterization from Zack himself. We just didn't really get a feel for what he was thinking throughout the entire thing. So I ended up giving it four stars instead of the five that Mariana Zapata usually gets for me, but I still loved it. Next are two books that I will talk about together, and that is Jock Rowe and Jock Rule, the first two books in the Jock Rowe series by Sarah Nay. These are the Hello Lovely editions. They are beautiful. And these books were really, really great. They were a fun time. There were no misunderstandings. They did both get four stars for me just because some parts felt a little bit rushed. There were a couple of like editing type issues that really bothered me that were not caught that probably should have been caught, but overall it wasn't enough to like detract from the entire story and I still really, really enjoyed it. And yeah, they both got four stars. After that, I read Starry-Eyed Love by Helena Hunting. This was another arc that I believe had gotten sent to me in my email. I enjoyed this thoroughly as well. It was very CEO romance type and the female-female interactions in this were fantastic. There was no like women hating other women for getting in the way of a relationship, even though it easily could have gone that way. I just, read it for yourself and I think that you guys will really enjoy it. It was a very cute, very fun, very quick read. And because of those character interactions, I ended up giving it a 5 out of 5 stars. I just really, really enjoyed that aspect of it and the way that it just turned that particular trope on its head. And because of that, I was put, well not because of that, but I, I had read the sports romance earlier on with the Jock Rowe series, and I was in a sports romance mood, so then I picked up the next three books in the Offensive Line series by Tracy Ward. I had read a couple of books by her earlier on in this year. Uh, Alpha Foxtrot was one of them. I don't remember what book number one was called, but I've loved them both. And uh, book number one ended up being a reread for me. Book number two, Sugar Rush, ended up being a reread as well. I just didn't remember having read it before, but I had that deja vu feeling when I was in the middle of it where I was like, I've definitely read this exact scene. So Sugar Rush was phenomenal. I gave it five out of five stars. Colt and Lily were adorable. Col Colt's growth. I have met very many people that act the same way that he does. Uh, and it, I don't know, it was just, he was a delight the entire time, and I really, really liked their story. After that was Wide Open in the same series, and that one ended up getting a four out of five stars for me. Uh, I just liked it a little bit less. I felt like it was a little bit rushed compared to the first or the other books that I had read. Um, I still really liked it, but and not as much as the other ones. And then the last one, I actually ended up giving three stars, and that was Broken Play. That was an age gap, and it was an uncomfortable age gap for me. I don't know. I, technically she was like 18 or 19, and I guess technically he was in his mid-twenties, but the characterization, it just, it didn't work out for me. I, I gave it three stars, it's definitely for other people, but it just felt a little uncomfy to me the entire time, so yeah, it just, it didn't work. But uh, I think that other people have obviously enjoyed it, so if any of that interests you, I do still recommend the entire Offensive Line series by Tracy Ward because it was a really good time. And then we're down to the last two books because I don't think that I talked about these in my previous video. So the next one was Shacking Up by Helena Hunting. I had really enjoyed Starry-Eyed Love, so I wanted to read more by Helena Hunting. This one didn't quite do it as well for me. In it, you have a struggling Broadway actor who actually comes from a background of a lot of money, and she is trying not to take any help from her father, so she's trying to make it on her own, but she is between jobs because things keep going wrong, and she ends up at a party for, for her best friend. I don't remember what kind of party it is, but her friend is newly engaged. Maybe it was an engagement party, I'm not 100% sure. Comes out of the bathroom, and all of a sudden a man grabs her and starts making out with her, and obviously she is surprised by this. It later comes out that he was under the influence of both alcohol and a lot of flu medicine, and he thought that she was somebody else. Um, but they kind of keep crossing each other's paths and inevitably fall in love. It was, it was okay. It was an, an okay time. Um, there were some, not con, I, I don't know, character issues that I had that I didn't really click with. And I don't know, something about the way that they dealt with each other, I just didn't 100% love. But the, the ending was adorable and the, the way that everything came together in the end was really cute. Also, he had a pet tarantula and... I know that a lot of people do, and I just, I can't deal. That's a big phobia of mine, and every time they talked about it, it was gross. But he also had a pet ferret, and the ferret was precious, and I do love that aspect of their relationship, because he had hired her to be a pet sitter for him uh, while he was gone, and you ended up getting a lot of, like, pet interactions, which I always adore in a romance novel, or any novel, honestly. But the thing is, she was a little bit of a creep. So when she was pet sitting for him, she would, like, 
go and sleep in his bed like the entire time he was gone he was gone for like six weeks and she would just like sleep in his bed and use his bathroom even though he had like put her in a guest room and given her a guest bathroom and like all of that stuff and she just decided to move her way into his room on her own and they kindled a bit of a relationship via like voicemail and text message it was just a little bit weird but it came together in the end and i enjoyed it enough to give it a three stars and then finally, the very last book that I read last month was Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. I don't know how to pronounce that last name, so I'm hoping I came somewhere close to how that's supposed to be pronounced. But I really, really loved this. And I don't know why it always takes me by surprise that I like mystery, because I love romantic suspense, and a lot of the mystery stuff out there does have romantic subplots. The romantic subplots in this gave me very Janet Ivanovich, like, one for the money vibes. Like, there is a bit of a three three-way is not the word that I meant. Love triangle. There is a love triangle going on, kind of. But essentially, so Finley Donovan is a struggling author. She has recently divorced. Her husband is newly engaged to, I think, their real estate agent or just a real estate agent. I don't know. She's a terrible person. Uh, so Finley is in a Panera trying to talk to her agent about the plot for her next book. She's a mystery author, so she is trying to figure out how to kill off somebody in her next book. Somebody in a booth near them overhears it and thinks that she's talking about it as though she's a contract killer and hires her to murder her husband. And Finley kind of just gets sucked into this whole plot. I'm not gonna go into all of it because there's a lot of fun twists and turns that you kind of need to read for yourself and find out that I had a lot of fun going with. I think that it was hilarious and deeply unrealistic, but delightful all the same. I laughed out loud a couple of times. I just had a really good time with it. There were a couple of things that like, I don't know, bothered me a little bit about Finley's character and I liked the relationships that she was building with both the detective and the bartender. In the love triangle, I will say that I am on the detective side over the bartender, but I'm not going to say wh which direction she goes, and there's definitely more books, so I guess there's room for that to change. I am very interested in seeing what happens to her in the following books, because the way that the events fell out throughout the course of this plot, I just don't see them repeating in a way that keeps her hands totally clean. I just, I want to, I want to see how that goes. I adored the relationship that she had with the nanny slash new friend whose name that I cannot remember. Rona, maybe, is her name? I think? I'm not sure. I just, it was great. Uh, I liked it a lot. I ended up giving it four stars, and if you haven't read Finley Donovan is Killing It, I highly recommend. Okay, so most of my TBR for last month obviously got completely derailed. There were a couple of fantasies on there that I had wanted to pick up that I didn't come anywhere close to touching. But I think I put the Jock Rowe series on there, so that obviously counts. I don't think that I got to any of the other romances that I had placed on it, but yeah, that's how reading slumps go, right? Um, I am optimistically putting together another set of books for a TBR for this month. Who's to say how that's going to work out, but we're gonna try our best, which as my niece likes to say is all that you can do. So the first book that I have on it is Tutoring the Player. Hmm? by Rebecca Jenshack. This was a Hello Lovely Trope of the Month box. I think it was a sports romance trope of the month, and I am obviously still in a romance mood, so I would like to try and pick this up if possible. And the other one is Jock Road by Sarah Nay. This is the third book in the Jock Row series. I was really enjoying my time with it. Uh, they're not on Kindle Unlimited anymore, which was really disappointing for me. So not disappointing that I have to read them physically. It's just a little bit less convenient for me to have to carry it around everywhere. So I'm going to try and pick up book three. They're so, they're so small. I mean, this is literally like barely 300 pages. So it should be a quick read and they're definitely a fun time. And I'm looking forward to reading the rest of the Jock Row series when I get to them. Now here's where the optimism comes in because the last three are straight up fantasy or sci-fi and we'll see how it goes. I'm going to try my best. Flamefall by Rosaria Munda got moved from last month's TBR to this month's TBR because I really have to read this freaking book. I received an arc of uh, the third book that's name is completely Fury Song. Fury Song. Uh, I received an arc of Fury Song, so obviously I have to finish book two in order to read book three, and I would like to do that relatively soon. So Flamefall got moved to this month's TBR. I'm going to do my best to try and read it in a timely manner. This is a little bit easier, I think, because it is YA. It's not quite so heavy on the fantasy elements as the other books that I'm about to talk about, but yeah, I, I would like to read this this month. Honestly, this one's probably not going to be that hard for me to get to, but Nemesis Games by James S.A. Corey is the fifth, fifth book in the Expanse series, and 
I just finished reading Stable of Burns. We're already in June, so you guys will have to hear me talk about it in my June wrap-up, but I blew through that book in two days. Uh, Stable of Burns is probably one of my new favorite books in the Expanse series, which I was not expecting to happen at all. So I'm looking forward to what happens to our favorite crew as they enter Nemesis Games. I don't even know if this is where it stops talking about them or not, but I think they're still featured in this one. So yeah, I can't wait to move on with the Expanse. I am probably going to pick this up next if I'm being perfectly honest. I just sci-fi. I don't know what it is about it, but it always pulls me out of a reading slump too. And last but not least, and probably the most optimistic book on this entire thing, is The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. John read this and he loved it and he really really wants me to read it as well, so I'm going to try my absolute best. It does sound fascinating. I know a lot of the booktubers that I watch had nothing but great things to say about it, and I would like to join in on that hype because I know that this started out as self-published before I think it got picked up by Orbit. Um, so I always like to try and support authors that start out that way, or continue that way, obviously. Uh, so Shadow What Was Lost is the last book on the June TBR. Okay, um, so I mean, I'm having a good start to the month, relatively. Uh, it's the fifth. I've already finished two books. They were not, like, particularly, I don't know, they were kind of big considering all of the size of the romance novels that I read last month. But I think I'm coming back out of my reading slump because I did thoroughly enjoy both of the ones that I read. Hopefully I can dive into some fantasy and sci-fi, just taking it a little bit easier on myself and not trying to force myself into reading or enjoying anything. You guys know how that goes, and yeah, we'll see how this month goes. I hope you guys all had a really great reading month in May. I hope that you will continue to have a great reading month into June, but that is it for this video today, guys. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Down in my description box, you're going to see links to my Goodreads, my Twitter, and my Instagram, as well as a rep code to Hello Lovely that'll get you 15% off of your order. And that's all for this one today, so I'll talk to you in my next one. Bye!